I'm Teresa Aronson, President and CEO of St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. It's our pleasure, our honor to do this event every second Friday of the month. And of course we do it with no one else but the mayor. So welcome Port St. Lucie Mayor Gregory Orbeck. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you for getting my name right. Good morning, Port How would I, when? Oh, I want to see the stats on getting your name wrong. But I do want to Just say... Just that one time you called me Linda. Yes, yes. Call me Sue. <laughs> um, but we're, today we're going to do things a little bit differently. We usually start with our sponsor, of course, Mid Florida Credit Union, our great partner in this um, for the last year and next year. We're super excited about that. But you have to be somewhere today. I, do. I have to go out the door at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. We have 20 minutes. So we're going to get into it. Are you going to tell us what you're going to do? Is it something exciting? Sure. Uh, I was invited to attend. Uh, they're uh, going to be drawing water into the C44 stormwater treatment area. So if you care about water quality in our area, C44, that might sound familiar. Uh, that, of course, is the waterway that connects Lake Okeechobee to the South Fork of the St. Lucie River. Mm -hmm. And they're working on a huge uh, SERP project. And you know what SERP stands for, but just in case anyone uh, needs to learn that little bit of alphabet soup, SERP is the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan. It was authorized by Congress in 2000. And Congress and the state of Florida said, hey, you know what? The Everglades are worth saving, protecting, and enhancing. We're going to do that. And we're going to do a number of big time projects to make it happen. Right. And unfortunately, we're way behind. And uh, if they keep funding it at the current level, it won't get done until 2066. Uh, so uh, a lot of caring people are working hard to, to try to do better than that. And the state of Florida has really stepped up over the last couple of years. And uh, Governor DeSantis has really been uh, leading the charge since he's been elected. And so the state is putting up its money. We're trying to get the federal government to put up theirs. Uh, but this is one of those milestones along the way that is a reminder that we can get stuff done. So there is a huge storage area going up in Martin County, right off of the C44, the Okeechobee Waterway. Okay. And the first piece of that, long awaited, is the stormwater treatment area. and that they'll hit the button and the water will start going in there today. Good. That's exciting because it'll clean it out a little bit. Absol absolutely. Yeah. And we're doing that too. Just the start. Yeah, we are at McCarty yeah. Ranch. That's exactly right. It's a very similar concept and uh, we can't do it enough. No, definitely. We got to do something between, you know, it's a straight shot right now down these canals and we need to do something to kind of uh, clean that out before it hits the water. It's, it's been a huge problem, obviously. I mean, you have to be living under a rock in Florida not to know about the water problems in this area. It's true. Well, actually, throughout Florida. Well, do you want to get to questions today, do, or do you have anything you want to talk to them about? Or I'll just say that uh, SERP is a big deal. been working on it. Uh, it's a priority of the city water quality, things like McCarty, septic to sewer conversion. Yeah. We have a number of smaller stormwater treatment projects going in across the city. There's there's always something going on. If you've ever been on the east side, the Eastern Watershed Improvement Project is a good example of a local large-scale project. And that is another focus of our legislative agenda this year in Tallahassee. We've already been up to Tallahassee in the last two weeks lobbying for those important projects and water quality. So that is important. And I will say last Friday, I went to the county, city, city of Fort Pierce, temporary animal shelter, mm -hmm. and uh, visited that. I heard about it. I'm not going. What happened not, when you went to the not, shelter? Well, what happened yeah, what when I went to the What did you leave with when you went to the well, shelter? I, uh, and it, we have one dog already, Duncan Doodle, the pound poodle. He's a, he's a pit bull lab mix, we would say. And uh, we've uh, been his proud parents for about seven years now. And uh, when I went to the temporary shelter, got into the cat business, and uh, either today or tomorrow, I'll be bringing home three cats. And I also guaranteed that if a, a really cute little power pup, little white pup, uh, pit bull mix, if he didn't find a home, that we would guarantee him a home. So one visit, three three cats, one dog. Yes. One yeah, and that would bring me dog. that would bring me to my statutory limit in the city of Port St. Lucie. You're allowed to have five animals, oh, five yeah. pets. So there's a limit to the number of animals you can have. So that little white power pup, he would bring us to our to our cap at five. But I've never had cats before. But these were very friendly. Outgoing cats. I'll talk to you in six months. See how you feel. About it. <laughs> and where do the cats sleep? Where will they sleep? In your bed? My wife said in my bed. I was like, well, is it like that old Twilight Zone where they're going to try to suck the breath out of me? And, <laughs> oh, 
kill me in my sleep. She's like, no, that doesn't happen, but they will sleep in the bed. I was like, oh. And they will leave hair. Yeah, yeah. well, at least I don't leave any hair, so it'll maybe, <laughs> it'll maybe balance out uh, a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, traditionally, the Humane Society of St. Lucie County provided uh, sheltering services for, for the city of Port St. Lucie. And they were in a state of decline for a number of years. And actually, there was a big uh, newspaper uh, article and front page story this week about how the sheriff's office investigation uh, is not proceeding with any charges. But they did uh, provide a number of recommendations. But there's been a turnover in the leadership of the Humane Society. And so uh, over the last week, and being really inspired by the visit to the temporary shelter, been uh, having some conversations, and I hope that they bear fruit in the I days ahead. I'm not going to say too much because I, I get a little emotional about it, but it's good that there's new leadership, and uh, we do hope that they can bounce back. It's just going to be a matter of uh, the timing, and uh, can we... Can we affect positive change before it's too late? And when I say emotional, I mean angry. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> that is, a, that is a, an emotion. It is. <laughs> so Good. hopefully we'll talk more about that at the next show. Mm -hmm. And we've been working on a lot of economic development in the city also. There's been a, a number of positive developments. At the next city council meeting, which is on a Tuesday rather than a Monday, we will have the Cleveland Clinic BGTI deal come back to us for public hearing and uh, perhaps final approval. I'm certainly supportive of it. Yeah. And the meeting is on Tuesday uh, rather than Monday because of Veterans Day. So do we have any uh, past or present members of the armed forces here? If so, will you please stand up and be Aww. recognized? Please stand up. Yeah, I know Wayne. So thank you for your service and allow us to do everything that we do here. Uh, in the United States and Florida and, of course, Port St. Lucie. And we're working on prosperity, and that prosperity and our freedom to, to pursue it is secured by veterans, so we can't thank you enough. Uh, we are a hometown for heroes, and we are focused on prosperity. And so that Cleveland Clinic's a big deal. Uh, there's been a couple of contracts in Southern Grove. That's our jobs corridor, that area south of Tradition Parkway all the way to Becker. And there's some more really exciting things in the works. And unfortunately, I just can't divulge everything yet because it's not far enough along. But there'll be, I think, some big announcements coming up. So I guess that's, that's what I'd like Southern to share. Southern Groves is really, I was at a meeting yesterday, and they were saying they'd get a lot of interest in it, a lot of phone calls. So we, we probably should see that. Already we have a, a question. I don't see the mic. They weren't ready oh, they weren't? All right. Well, write it down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Here we go, it's coming. The Learner Institute is gonna help with the Cleveland Clinic. It's gonna be a partner there, right? Right, so if you've been That's following exciting. along with that proposal, Cleveland Clinic, you know, they are obviously a regional healthcare provider now. They've taken over Martin Health Systems. They've also taken over Indian River. They've already been in Weston. They're also, I believe, in uh, Jacksonville area. Yep. And in addition to that healthcare, just the provision of healthcare on a regional <laughs> basis, where they're one of the top two brands in, in healthcare, they are proposing to bring the Learner Institute, their research arm, down from Cleveland, the vaccine group from Australia, and FIU also wants to be a part of it, and they've funded some what they call principal investigators, PIs, mm -hmm. for short. Those are the scientists that do research. They're going to put them in that VGTI building and use it what it was designed and built for, which is state-of-the-art uh, biotech research. Great. It was built exactly for that. It was, and in fact, I mean, I just like to be brutally honest, it was built with other people's money, yes. which makes it like the Taj Mahal best possible. Like imagine if you got to redo your kitchen with someone else's money, it would have every stinking feature in there. And we kind of have to laugh so we don't cry here because of course we were stuck with the, the bill, but that ship has sailed, it yeah. is what it is. And you had this amazing lab. So. Part of the analysis has to be, uh, because the, all the other people who were interested in the building were local uh, developers that would have gutted mm -hmm. what makes the building special and turned it into a local medical office, business office. Is that the highest and best use for this Taj Mahal of, of labs? And of course, uh, you probably know where I was at. I, I am on use it for its intended purpose. 
especially now that FIU is investing in Torrey Pines and you have the Cleveland Clinic brand as an anchor to, to Southern Grove. Well, we have our first question. All right, bring it. Hey, Erwin Sadeke, ARP over in Kings Isle. First of all, thank you very much for starting to improve the St. Lucie West uh, Boulevard area. Uh, we had a presentation uh, yesterday by your uh, Bob Sweeney and uh, Heath Stockton. They did a great job. Did he, Bob's pretty new. Did you like him? Did he yeah, I liked him very much. We chatted. He's right on target. He presented well. He talked about um, the, the department itself and 170 employees and did a great job. Question, when, you're, when you went up to the State Department, State, did you get any um, feelings that you, we might get additional monies for our infrastructure projects? Erwin is always on it, just so you know. He always knows what's going on. They invite good speakers out there. They do. Well, yeah. you got to love Kings Island. Gary lived in Kings Island also. And yep. Great, great neighborhood of Port St. Lucie. So we absolutely did ask for infrastructure dollars. We were, of course, focused on the, kind of the water quality side. So the storm water and then the wastewater, you know, septic to sewer conversion. That was the thrust. And we actually don't want to call it a road project because it'll hurt us. We are pursuing the extension, uh, we'll call it an economic development project, of uh, Tom Mackey Boulevard. That's Pete Hegner. That's the spine road that has been constructed out here in Southern Grove. So if anyone can see that and they can see my little cursor there, you know, as I zoom in, this is the hospital. Look at that. Google recognized it as Cleveland Clinic Tradition Hospital, of course, which is correct. Ooh, that's some power. C City Electric you've seen out there. That's 411,000 square feet, about to get its, uh, if it doesn't have its CO, it will have it. Uh, ribbon cutting will be right after the, the first of the year. They're already starting to play with those LED lights on the building at night. Uh, this road right here, which we right now call Loop Road, that is named Tom Mackey Boulevard after the founder of City Electric, but it's gonna be extended, and the extension is gonna be called Pete Hegner Drive, I always remember drive because Pete, uh, God, God rest his soul, he, he loved, you know, he liked golf. So Pete Hagner Drive, and we're going to extend that roadway for those next economic development prospects, uh, including Excel, which is a wire, uh, a high-tech wire manufacturer. They manufacture the wire that goes into airplanes and spaceships. Uh, they want to be out there. Oculus. We got there, knock on wood, November 12th, they'll close there right here. So we went after the extension of this road. We're asking for about $4 million to help extend that road. It gets tricky to try to ask for actual road dollars from the state. Everyone gets really ticked off if you try to go around what's called the work program. So in Florida, obviously we have counties, and we also have something called transportation planning organizations, and their organizations uh, there's a governing body, and you usually have all the, uh, the, the local governments sit on that. Uh, like here in, in St. Lucie, we have the St. Lucie TPO, and you have the city of PSL, city of Fort Pierce, you have the county, you have the school district, you have the Council on Aging. So you have all these players that sit on it, and we come up with the road improvement plans. And it's more than roads because it's multimodal, so rail and ports and all kinds of things. And then you rank the projects, and then the state has an allocation of money for your area through the Florida Department of Transportation districts. And they get really ticked if you try to blow up going around that plane. It gets really political. So you only do that in case of emergency. Uh, so we're really focused on the other type of projects, but absolutely. And then uh, we also try to leverage at the federal level because the Economic Development Administration, they also sometimes have infrastructure projects. But thank you, and thank you to all the voters who voted for the half cent sales tax, because as you pointed out at the beginning of your question, those are really moving along. And out there, one of the ones I'm waiting for is that uh, cashmere project, which is underway, because that's such a you know that, that's such a pain in the way it backs up. And so we had that discussion yesterday. That whole L is called um, Tom Mackey Boulevard, then. Yes. Okay. Very good. I would. And then the extension south will be Pete Hegner Drive. Okay. Originally, the whole thing was uh, slated to be Pete Hegner Drive, but uh, as we were going through the negotiations and we wanted City Electric to build their headquarters here versus North Carolina or Texas, I said, sure, we can name it 
Tom Mackey Boulevard. Okay, happy there to. There you go. It's a small piece. Henry has a question, so we're going to come up here. Will you look for that? Oh, just remember, you can always go to cityofpsl.com slash sales tax, and you can get the latest and greatest <laughs> with our sales tax, sales tax projects. And just this last week, I was on Nextdoor. I don't know if you've ever been on there. I don't go on there that much because it gets pretty, gets pretty rough in there. There's a lot of people just let it fly before they kind of think it out. It's really a venting board more than a constructive board. But every once in a while I get flagged or I see the post of the day and I, I jump into the, into the ring off the top. I, I mean, next door, you know what you're doing when you open that up. I can't even feel sorry for you anymore. It's, well, there was just no, a person that said, oh, well, the city, you know, they, they were going after the sales tax and they promised that Floresta Drive would be improved. And of course, they've totally forgotten about it. And that is not true at all. Floresta Drive is a big time project. You have to engineer it. You got to permit it. Then you got to bid it. And then you got to build it. Just remember. And if you would just go to cityofpsl.com slash sales tax, and you could look at the project tracker. You could look at the yearly schedule. It's not complicated. Look, it's just a chart. And you could go to Floresta Drive, and you could say, oh, well, it's 2019 still, it's almost 2020, what's going on? There's all kinds of stuff going on. So the south portion of Floresta is already designed. We're uh, on Tuesday night's agenda, we're gonna approve the engineering firms to design the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And the thing is gonna start construction next year. So it is, it's hopping. You realize some people, and I know this is gonna be a shock to you, are never happy and aren't happy unless they're unhappy. Correct? I'll, I'll let the, the head of the chamber say that. I'll okay, just not. very good. We'll let Henry get his question in. Well, since I get only one, one question, I'm going to load it up, Mayor. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So this is a run-on sentence. We're going to start yeah, with let that. Yeah, get my pen ready. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm back from Kansas. I see you guys finished my bridge. Thank you. And oh, is it well, Henry? Can we all use it, though, Henry? <laughs> <laughs> Well, my name's not on it yet, you know. <laughs> I'm working on it. Yeah, and uh, you trimmed my oak trees too on Boulevard. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you've been now, working overtime. Uh, yeah, I just want everyone to know watching on TV that they're not actually Henry's. We didn't like go on private property, uh, <laughs> spend public dollars. Even though we love Henry, we didn't, we didn't do it uh, for private gain here. Two more serious questions. Yeah, you went to uh, Tallahassee. Is the storage, you know, the storage area that we're building, is that still funded uh, at McCarthy Ranch? The water. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll wait till all the questions oh, are. Okay. And uh, the ra last one is, is there an inkling that might be a restaurant in the River Park? A restaurant at what park? River Park. Down the oh, the Westmoreland Park? Yeah. Yes. I don't, I don't want to say River Park because River Park's the unincorporated St. Lucie County <clears throat> that seems like it's in the city, but it's not in the city. So uh, we got Westmoreland property, There's and we got two. McCarty. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not so bad. bad. And you have exactly two minutes. Is that it? That's all. Can Gosh. it be done? Uh, I love this. I love being with you guys. That's thanks. <laughs> so McCarty, McCarty Ranch is a multi-phase project. There's several cells. One is operational. Two is under construction. Three, we have the planning money for and we're on now to asking for four. We have a grant in on three. We're hoping that we're gonna get the word from DEP any day that we got the money for that. Four is what we're asking for this year. So that's where we're at, and we should be able to go to our little landing page. Is well, it on the Can we talk about the page? restaurant as you search? Yeah, do you know the answer? I don't wanna say the answer. I don't think it's a done deal. No, but there is a letter of intent uh, with Manatee Island Okay, and you might be familiar with them because they already operate locations on the Fort, Pier, uh, Fort Pierce Inlet and also Port Salerno, right over by Shrimpers over there. And so they have expressed interest in building a restaurant, a two-story restaurant on the Westmoreland property. And remember the Westmoreland property is the one right next to the Botanical Gardens, just to the south of the Botanical Gardens on the North Fork of the St. Lucie River. And we're already extending the boardwalk. So that project is underway to have the boardwalk go underneath Port St. Lucie Boulevard Bridge to wrap around and to, to tie in. So that's, that's in the works. And the LOI is hopefully going to lead to an actual contract. And I think I haven't 
finish reviewing the agenda for this next meeting, but it should be coming forward, if not for the contract, at least an update. So, yes, restaurant. It's exciting. I want to mention while you're looking for that as well. I'm going to use this time wisely. Chief, you're please. two minutes Absolutely. over. Um, there is, they are looking for drivers for the connector, our transportation, our, our public transport here. And uh, they need several drivers because they want to extend those routes. And you only have to be 18 to 25. You do not have to have a CDL. So if anybody is interested in driving um, for the connector, it's through the Council of Aging, Council on Aging, St. Lucie County. Uh, you can apply there, but it's it's new that they don't have to have a CDL. They'll get you trained. So if anybody's 18 to 25, because we desperately need to expand on the services through our Treasure Coast Connector. So there you go. Oh, you found it. I did. So here it is. And of course, it's hard to appreciate scale, especially when you're looking at something like this. So one is the one that is done. And remember, that's a two and a half mile walk around just that first pond. So these are very large areas, and that's what you need to filter water and to store water is very large areas. So one, two and a half mile walk to get around that puppy. Uh, and remember, that's what, like 10 laps around your high school track? So, you know, it's pretty serious. Is that north of the Saint Boulevard? That is way out west, and let's see here. So McCarty. Yeah, McCarty's oh, south. So let me west. zoom out. So yeah. let me let me zoom out here. She's so so right now we're right we're right here. If you can mm -hmm. can see this, and here's McCarty. Okay. All right. So here's uh, where you want to find the hospital over here. Here's McCarty. And what I always want everyone to realize about development in Port St. Lucie is even if you like, you hated development, you wanted the mayor and council to stop it. Development is legally entitled out here to range line. There's 50, 55,000, almost 56,000 dwelling units approved on the west side of 95. So we're going to keep growing all the way out to this line. And so right on the other side of this line is McCarty and then the McCarty extension. And you can actually see it. This is a recent enough aerial now to see the first phase come to life. And how they build these impoundments with this type of system is they dig a canal around uh, the outside for seepage relief, they dig inside and they take that fill material and they build a berm and then they flood it up to about four feet in this case. And that's it. And since I'm already late, I'll just show you that here is, here's McCarty, right? And I got to go out here. So I got to run, but I'm so glad that you were here. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mid Florida. Thank you, Trissa, my friend, Chamber of Commerce. Sarah, will you raise your hand? If you had a question for me that I'm not going to be able to get to, just please find Sarah and leave her the question. I'll do my, ba uh, my best to get back to you in a timely manner. But this is, if you hear this about the C44, the Okeechobee Waterway, this is it right here. So it's coming out of Lake O into the, the C44, and then it hits. This is why Palm City and Southern Martin County get it the worst, because it actually hits the South Fork, right? And we're on the North Fork, so the South Fork and the North Fork come together right about the Roosevelt Bridge, right? And we're not as directly impacted. We're only impacted by tidal influence and that water creating kind of like a water-made dam that keeps our water from getting out, which is bad in its own way. And this is Club Med, the only Club Med in the U.S. I'll see you later. I know. Uh, have a good day. Thank you. Drive careful. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Coffee with the Mayor. I'm Teresa Aronson from the St. Lucie County Chamber of Commerce. I'm back with Justin Willamy. This is Justin's first time on the show. He's, of course, with our partner in this endeavor, uh, Mid Florida Credit Union. Were you nervous to come on the show today? Uh, I am very nervous. You are? Yeah. Really? Because <laughs> hundreds of people are 
I know, and everyone's super <laughs> excited to be here. They wanted to hear about mortgages at nine o'clock in the morning, so here I am. Mortgages are riveting. Don't let anybody ever tell you anything else. I notice you're already backing up. Come I'm up sorry, here with I'm sorry. me. <laughs> Mid Florida Credit Union, our regular viewers know, of course, it's a um, credit union. It started as a teacher's credit union That's and right. a shoebox in Lakeland. You guys are, are growing legs everywhere, um, and, and you just, uh, you're going to purchase some other banks and you're just growing like weeds. We're taking over. I know. And um, you guys have some specials going on. I know there was a mortgage rate special. Did I see that <clears throat> and come through my email? I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to. We do have a 120 day rate lock right now. So folks that can come in, you want to get pre-approved and you're worried about the market fluctuating, we can actually lock you in now, even if you're not ready to buy the house like today. So you might get pre-approved and find a house two <laughs> months later. That rate lock is good for 120 days. Yeah, so typically it's like 30 days if you're lucky. Typically on pre-approval, we don't even do a lock. Oh, so really? not until you have that contract that you're ready to buy that house. So it's actually a really good program. So am I safe in guessing you do mortgages? I do mortgages. Okay. That's I'm, all I do. That's all you do. Yeah, I don't know anything about any other part of the bank. Yes, you want a savings <laughs> account, don't, don't look at me. Don't look at me, I'll send you to Karina. She'll yeah. be more than happy to open the checking accounts and savings accounts and business accounts for the Chamber of Commerce members here. Yes, and we um, haven't mentioned that for a while, but anybody that lives, works, or worships in the, in, in the area is eligible to become a member. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. Yeah, and that means you're eligible for these mortgage rates. You are, and what's great is I know that Port St. Lucie, and I say this lovingly, we have a huge snowbird population. Um, we can actually do mortgages outside of the state for second homes um, and also for primary residences in certain cases. Wow. Yep. Very nice. And do you work out of all the branches or are you at one particular branch? I work mainly at the Gatlin and the US-1 branch, okay. but I can pretty much work anywhere. So if you're located up somewhere else and you meet Jim Vero, I can do that as well. Okay, great. Um, what else should they know about Mid Florida? I know we're opening up, um, we're going to be doing a dedication hopefully soon for the Civic Center. Yes, and we're also opening a branch down in Stewart. Not that that matters for you guys here. Uh, well, necessarily, he's, the mayor's but... not here. You can say it. Mr. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but for those of you who travel a lot to Stewart and back, you know, that's a great location to have down there. And we locked down naming rights for the Civic Center, the Port St. Lucie Civic Center. We're super excited about that. Do we know what the name is? We still don't know what the name is. Okay. I've been partial to Justin Williams, you know, community yeah, service. I'm center, sure. But, uh, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, it that's probably going to happen as much as my combination of my husband and my name for the next grandkid. It should be Brissa, and nobody's <laughs> buying into that. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't see them buying into that. No, it's not a popular name. All right. Well, I want to tell everybody how to get a hold of you if you're interested in a mortgage or what kind of rate you can get, yeah, and um, we'll name the locations here in St. Lucie County. Absolutely. Sounds great. Okay, so what's your, where, how do they get a hold of you? Well, you can call me by phone. Um, the, there's a number, 772-200-2228, and then just, it'll ask for my name. You can put it in there. It'll go right to the branch uh, where I work. Also, you can just walk into the Gatlin branch, make an appointment, or, or just walk in. Walk-ins are welcome. Always walk welcome. Walk-ins are welcome. Gatlin, US-1, you also have a branch, um, St. Lucie West Boulevard. St. Lucie West, yep. Very good, and soon to be Stewart. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for being with us, Justin. Thank I you. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I, I don't go away. You I just can't go away yet. I know he's trying very hard. If I don't hold on to him, he's gonna be in, he's gonna be behind this thing. All right. Well, thank you so much, and thanks to Mid Florida as always, and to At Your Service Catering, who provides the coffee and Danish free to the public. Anyone can come to this. It's the second Friday of every single month, 8:30, right here in Council Chambers at the City of Port St. Lucie. We'd love to have you come on down. It's a great place to get in your questions. And uh, thanks to Gus and the staff and Sarah and everybody here. We appreciate that as well. Till next time, everybody, have a great day.